Okay, here's another uh, quick little low budget video here. Just uh, tell you a little bit about uh, this little project that I built about uh, five, six years ago. Uh, actually, just a little over five years ago. It's an equivalent series resistance meter for testing, primarily testing electrolytic capacitors. There's a lot of plans for these up on the internet, and uh, you know, there's also commercial ones you can buy that are well calibrated and everything. And this is uh, this is really just uh, taking a look at the different schematics that are out there, seeing what other people have done, and uh, just adapting it uh, for you know what I wanted to build, and uh, also kind of adapting it for the parts that I had on hand in my junk box at the time. Um, there's some a lot better designs out there that have got protection for charge caps and stuff like that, but uh, I didn't uh, really care too much to put those things in this design because I'm the only one that's using it. But I'll just walk you through it real quick and we'll show you kind of how it works. So uh, basically there is a uh, just a little a hex inverter that I use as uh, you know both a little oscillator. It runs somewhere between 150 and 200 kilohertz, uh, followed by you know kind of a bunch of parallel inverters here uh, to act as a driver and uh, that kind of drives the uh, device under test through that little BNC port right there and uh, we read the resulting voltage uh, and uh, amplify that through this little single transistor amplifier here and that goes into this little DC restore circuit here uh, followed by another buffer and a peak detector to uh, generate a DC voltage to uh, render on a little ammeter uh, and uh, essentially what happens is it acts like an, an AC ohm meter, it's really all an, e an ESR meter is. Uh, so uh, let me show you how I built this thing. I actually built this thing in a little project box. Uh, actually I found that at Hamfest you can actually see there was some kind of interconnecting box <laughs> uh, made in Fairfield, New Jersey. I found this thing at a ham fest. Look at the price is still there, two dollars. <laughs> and uh, when I found this thing it already had this meter mounted in it. I picked it up a couple years ago and even before I built this and said, well, I'll build something into that one day. So this is what I built in it. So um, if you take a look at kind of how I built this, uh, it's a real simple little thing. Just turn this around. And uh, basically we could say it's just a little nine volt battery. Uh, there's the power switch, uh, the LED right there. Uh, that's the meter. And then here's our circuit. Uh, so LM7805, you know, kind of right here at uh, we use as a uh, you know, voltage regulator from the 9 volt down to regulated 5. There's our little uh, hex inverter uh, and driver. The little test port right here that I was using with those little sockets before I put this thing into the box. And that little single transistor is a little uh, 20x amplifier. And then uh, the DC restore uh, and buffer circuit for the peak detector is this little analog device is 8032. It's a nice little uh, rail to rail op amp that uh, has no phase reversal issues when you exceed the rails and stuff like that so made a nice thing for that this whole thing is just a, like on a perf board uh, all kind of just point to point wired with uh, kind of stiff wire and things like that we kind of take a peek underneath here you can kind of see you know it's, there's really nothing special about the construction and then the pot for doing the zero adjustment so uh, we will kind of show you how we, how, we, how we use this thing and how I use it to find some bad caps in a, uh, an LCD monitor I was work, working on so uh, I'm going to put the camera down here on the table, okay, and we'll go uh, go look at how we how we do, use this thing. So first thing we'll do is just show you how you kind of start off with using it. You want to kind of zero it just like you do with any other uh, you know ohmmeter. So I'm going to stick a BNC cable on here, and uh, I'll lift the camera back up. So if I turn it on, you can see the little green light come on there. Boom, it's on. And uh, what I'm going to do is just connect up to this little. Uh, you know, resistance you know, substitutor box here, so you can kind of get an idea of how how this is calibrated. Uh, you know, unlike the units that you find out, you know, in on the market that you can buy, you know, a lot of them are really very well calibrated. This one is just kind of rough, which is all I needed to do to figure out if I had bad caps or not. So we can see with this thing dialed in at zero ohms, uh, we're pretty darn close to being zeroed. So I can kind of adjust the uh, the thing here and zero us out. So that would t tell us that I've got you know less than an ohm of resistance you know connected whether it's just a resistor or in this case even a capacitor and we notice if I dial this up like I'll see if I can get both these in, in screen so there's one ohm resistance and two and three four five six seven eight nine so nine and then if we go to ten ohms there's ten ohms of resistance so ten ohms is about half scale and we go to twenty thirty forty fifty 
So it's about a 50 ohm scale, and certainly, you know, typically anything over just a few ohms at most is uh, it would indicate, you know, typically a bad cap. So if we disconnect my uh, resistance substitution box here, and uh, what I'm going to do is connect up a uh, set of test leads here, and we'll go look at a couple of capacitors. So here we go. So let's look at this guy. Is a 470 microfarad cap. Just an old cap I had laying around here, but uh, thought it'd be a good one to use because I have some 470 microfarad caps that I just pulled out of a power supply that are bad. Uh, this one, you know, it looks kind of grungy and it's got some goop on it from wherever it was installed last. I don't know where I salvaged this thing from, but it measures good on the capacitance meter. And if we go and measure this thing here on the ESR meter too, so I can do this with one hand, we'll connect up uh, you know, one lead and the other lead here. Boom. Now if we look on the ESR meter, boy that's pretty darn close to a short, which tells me that there's very little equivalent series resistance in this cap, so that's a good thing. So uh, let's go take a look at those caps that I yanked out of uh, the LCD monitor recently. So let's go pull one of those guys over here. If we take a look at this cap, so it's another 470 microfarad cap, okay, the 16 volt 470 microfarad cap. Now if the camera can pick this up if I get close here, kind of see that the top of that's a little bit bulged and that's kind of a dead giveaway that uh, capacitor is kind of going bad in most cases. I uh, can't really see too much on the bottom of this one that it might be bulged. But let's look at it. I pulled a second one out on the same board. Uh, so if we look at this one, eh, you can't really tell too much that it's bulged on the top but you certainly can see the bottom of this one is bulged out a little bit. So uh, if we take a look at these guys on the ESR meter we'll find that uh, even though they're the same value as that 470 microfarad cap I was just looking at, let's go uh, clip them into uh, into this one here and see what we've got. So let's uh, clip uh, this guy right on here and uh, oh, looks like these clips aren't going to work really well for these leads, but let's see what we can do. So I'll clip one of them on there and I'll clip the other one on here. Okay, and now if we go look at the meter Okay. Oh boy, that guy's sitting right about where the 10 ohms was. So that's most certainly a bad cap. I mean, any of these 470 microfarad caps should really be, you know, somewhere under an ohm or less typically, even if they're really small like that, like that cap is. So, uh, so that certainly indicates that uh, that that was a bad cap. And uh, the nice thing about the design of this one is that it only puts about 200 millivolts peak to peak across the capacitor, which means you can actually test these caps and you know, for the most part, in circuit because the voltage is not large enough to turn on any diodes or other junctions and things like that. So a lot of times you can just very quickly go through and test these capacitors while they're still in the circuit board just by probing them and looking for something that's very close to zero ohms. And if you see something that is like this one that is well over or close to 10 ohms it looks like, um, that tells you that's probably a bad cap. So anyway, that's a quick little tour of this little ESR meter that I built and how you can use it to look for bad, bad caps.